What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be reviewing your resumes. Now, if you didn't know this already, I'm about to drop a pro tip on you. Your resume is really important in order for you to get a job. And that is the high quality content that you guys come here for. So today I'm going to be reviewing some of your resumes and there's going to be a little bit longer video than normal because I will not be doing a lot of cuts. I'm going to be starting from the very top of the resume, work my way down to the very bottom of the resume. I'm going to be marking up the resume as I go along with my thoughts and critiques, things that I like, things that I don't like. Uh, this is going to be completely anonymous. So I'm going to take all of the personal information out of these resumes so that I can critique it uh, without anybody feeling bad. So if your resume is completely terrible and I call you out on just about everything, there's no hard feeling because it's completely anonymous. Without further ado, let's jump into our very first resume. So here's our very first resume. Like I said, we're going to be starting from the very top, going to the very bottom, um, and I'm going to be marking this up as we go along. So let's start at the very top with the header section. So he has his first and last name, um, phone number, and email, location, and then his LinkedIn. Um, all good things. You can also add you know, any type of website or any type of portfolio there as well. Um, but how he has it looks totally fine. So I don't really have any feedback on this top section. Let's read this professional summary really quick. Analytically driven financial analyst with two years of experience focusing on error-free reporting and analyzing trends on actual versus forecast revenue and indirect rates. Managing an average of 12.5 million worth of direct projects each month as corporate FP&A mid-level associate. Um, so... You know, a lot of people have a lot of different opinions on what you're supposed to do in this section. Um, some people take it truly as a summary. Um, some people will have bullet points and, and say kind of highlights of their career or about them as a whole, like their education and different things. Um, I have my own opinion on this. And my opinion is that this is supposed to be kind of like a sales pitch, an elevator pitch, if you've ever heard of that. So imagine... Uh, you get on an elevator with Elon Musk and you want him to know who you are and what you're, you know, you say you want a job with him, uh, what you're looking for within those, that 30 seconds that you have before he gets off the elevator. That's kind of what I imagine this professional summary. Um, and so it's hard for me to say that there's one right way to do this. Um, so I'm just going to give you my opinion, what I think should be changed. Um, in my opinion, I don't think you should be throwing around that you're, working with 12.5 million of indirect projects. I don't think that's really, that really makes sense to be in a professional summary. Um, the first part isn't bad because you say who you're a financial analyst with two years of experience. Uh, and these are some of the things you worked on. Um, in my opinion, after that sentence, you should be saying like what you want. Um, you know, here's who you are. Here's what you're looking for. Um, and that's just my opinion. So uh, again, I hate to... I hate to say that this is wrong because this area specifically is taken in so many different directions on so many resumes. So I'm not really going to mark that up. I, I think you can, I just would take out the 12.5 million worth of direct projects to me that just, uh, I don't know, doesn't, doesn't rewrite, uh, feels a bit like showboaty almost. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, but that's just my opinion. Let's go into the skills section. This is probably one of the, um, more important sections. And let's look at some of the skills that we've got. We got Cognos, Excel, Python, R, uh, Microsoft Power Query, Costpoint, Power BI, SQL, Hyperion, Smart View, Java, Tableau. Um, some of these things I have not heard of. Um, and so this may be domain specific uh, for financial analysts like Costpoint and Hyperion. I've heard of Cognos, but I don't use it. Um, Normally how I would like to do this is kind of order it in the level of importance. You know, if they're skimming this, they should see the most important ones right away. Um, to me, you know, things like SQL, R, Tableau, Power BI, Python, um, Excel. These are the things that I would be putting first so that when they are glancing at this or just looking at it, uh, they see those things first and put things like Java, which... Um, not a lot of analysts are going to be using Java. Um, Hyperion, SmartView, Cospoint, all these other things I'd be putting at the back or maybe even separate into two sections, um, you know, depending on the financial analyst role that you have. 
Um, then there might be two different skill sets. Um, some are domain specific, some aren't. And so you can separate them out. Um, but I would just be putting those first. Another kind of, another thing that I, I really wish was on here, and let me get rid of these really quick, um, is after Python, if you just do like a parentheses and you, you, know, you put some of the things that you know within Python, I find that to be extremely helpful. Because when you put Python in your skill section, to me, I don't know what that means. What do you know in Python? Do you know like web scraping? Do you know how to build, uh, you know, machine learning models? Uh, you know, what are you doing with Python? I don't know. For me, I like seeing pandas uh, because pandas is a, of course, an analytics library in, in Python. And it's extremely popular. It's used by a lot of teams. It's used by our team. Um, and so I like seeing that where people have parentheses and then have like a subset of skills within that or libraries or, or whatever it is. And so that's not only used for Python, you can do the same thing with Excel. Um, you probably don't need to do it with, you know, something like SQL or Tableau. Uh, those are, you know, those are pretty standard, I feel. Like I wouldn't be going in and putting SQL, like I know in parentheses, joins, unions, store procedures. Um, that's just not something that I would personally do, but you can do that if you'd like. That's up to you. So overall, the skill section isn't bad. Um, it's just... It's, it's, it says the skill and that's what it does. Um, and so if that's what you're going for, it was good. I would just add more to it. I'd organize it a little differently. Let's look at this work experience. First off, right off the bat, this work experience section down here looks really odd to me. Um, there's some really relevant stuff in here, but it doesn't uh, elaborate on any of this. So you have things like, System admin intern, customer care analyst, data center technician two, accounting intern. Um, and then you have your current role, which is the financial analyst and financial planning. To me, it just feels really odd, like really cramped. I would choose maybe just the top one or two um, jobs that you feel are the most relevant or the most recent and include bullet points on those as well. Uh, because it just feels like you only have this one role that, that you're trying to put on there. And then there's really quick. And then there's this additional experience down here, which just feels even more strange. Um, again, I would cut out this additional experience. A sales consultant really doesn't have much to do with it. What I would personally do is I would trim this down to the top three jobs maybe. Um, and, and then I would elaborate more on those. Um, let's really quick going back up to the top. You don't have to have six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 bullet points per job. I think five is like the max. You don't need more than five bullet points. I don't think you should put more than five bullet points. Um, you should be able to condense kind of your role, your main tasks that you feel are going to give somebody a good um, understanding of what you've done. So I would trim back this first one right here, and then I would elaborate on maybe the last two jobs. Again, I don't know what these jobs, I don't know what you're doing in these. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. I don't know exactly what you're doing in all these jobs, but it's really cluttered. There's a lot just going on like right over here. It's, you know, is this isn't how I would personally do it. Uh, again, this is all this is all just my opinion. So you don't have to take my advice. This is just my, what I think. Um, but let's take a look actually at some of these job, de the descriptions within this role. Um. So performing ad hoc analysis, special project as requested, assisting in uh, planning, development, and execution of long-range deliverables. I'm gonna I'm gonna skim really quick. Creating reports to help analyze an actual, help analyze actual and forecast potential areas of risk. Contribute to monthly processes. Prepare timely and insightful monthly variance reports and create an exit. So everything that I'm seeing is like really high level, which is not a bad thing. Um, you know, you have some action items like you're performing, you're creating, you're contributing, um, good stuff. Something that I would be adding is if you can, and not everybody can do this, um, and not, not, not even everybody has even made that huge of an impact in their role, which sounds terrible, but if you can quantify any of this, um, any type of numerical information, like, um, you know, I performed ad hoc analysis and special progress as requested you know, working with 
like 20 different vendors or, you know, working with yeah, financially, uh, working with banks or whoever you work with, just something to quantify some of the work you do. Because when you say that it can, it can mean very little or it can mean a lot depending on some of those different variables. Um, anything including like, you know, if you got your company a, a grant that got them a million dollars or, or, or something like that, you can throw that in there and it's very quantifiable and they can really like understand it better, I think. Um, and so, yeah, that's the only thing that I think it's missing. I don't think any anything that you have on there is terrible. Um, that's just at a quick glance, that's that's what I think. Um, and then I would again, I would redo I would redo this section a little bit because I feel like you just included too much. It's all the way back to August of 2010. I mean, it's 11 years ago. I, I don't think you need to go that far back. Um, and so let's go down a little bit further. Let's go look at the education. Um, so in 2019, graduated from George Mason University, double major in accounting and information systems and operating operation management. That's really cool. Um, GPA three out of four, Boston University, Masters of Science in Applied Data Analytics. Very nice. Um, so, you know, good education. Uh, I'm not a person who wants to put the, I think I had like a three, four or something. I don't, I've never felt like the GPA was something that I w should put on there or was supposed to put on there. Um, and I think that's, I, th I think that's really location based. Like that's like, like some people in certain countries or certain locations do that. I have never done that. I've never really cared if somebody had like a 4.0. Um, you know, that's just not something that I personally have cared about. But I do think that sometimes in like internships or if you're getting like an entry level job right out of college, it may be worth putting on there. Or sometimes they require it is what I've been told. Um, again, I didn't do any type of internship. I just dove straight in um, and I didn't have that on my resume. So, you know, my opinion is just not to have it on there. But there are some cases where People want it on there or need it on there. So um, let's move on to the year up awards. Um, and it, yeah, let me just, I would just remove this. That's really all my feedback on that. Um, so the year up, a year up awards, I don't know what that is. 2014 to 2015. Uh, I'm sure that's, it might be like a company based thing. Um, his, this is under his achievements. Excellence of leadership, engagement, embrace diversity, Perfect Attendance Intern of the Month Award. Uh, what is there to say? Uh, won some awards, added them to your resume. I don't necessarily see a problem with it. Um, again, I have a lot of really, I don't, maybe, maybe I'm just unique in the fact that that's not something that I would put on mine or care about. But, you know, honestly, I could see people wanting to see stuff like this. Um, and so, I don't have a problem with this being on here at all. I personally just, that's not something that I would be adding. Um, <clears throat> I think things like scholarships and, um, you know, awards for, I guess maybe for, for leadership and stuff like that, is not bad to add. It's just not personally something that um, I would be adding to mine. Just my opinion. Uh, so overall, I think this resume was not bad at all. It, you know, good education, uh, already has two years of experience, really good skill set, just needs to be reformatted, in my opinion, a little bit. Uh, the layout overall is really good. Uh, I really like the um, sections and the layout and the way it's organized. Some people will put this skill section um, like way down here, even under education sometimes. I like that the skill section is right there. Um, the glance factor is good on this resume. If you don't know what the glance factor is, the glance factor is the 15 seconds that a hiring manager or a recruiter is going to look at your resume. Um, and within those 15 seconds or however long they spend, you want them to really see who you are, the skills you know, the experience that you have extremely quickly. Um, and this has that glance factor. I can really quickly skim this resume and it's not super cluttered. It's not, it's not a ton of reading. Um, it just, it, it tells you what it needs to know. So Overall, I think this is a really good resume. I just had a little bit of feedback, um, but you know, I like this resume. So let's move on to the next one and see what that one is like. All right, so we are on to the next resume. This one is definitely very unique. I'm gonna scroll down really quick and just show you. It has the resume, but it also has some scripts as well. Um, if you've seen my video, I used to do this when I was first starting out is I would send scripts with my resume 
very similar to this. It was actually a separate file, but he just included it on his resume. So I am really looking forward to actually looking at these scripts and tell you what I think of those. Um, if they, you know, make him look good or, you know, don't make him look good. Uh, you know, you can tell a lot about a person by how they write a SQL query. Yeah, just so much. Uh, no, not really. But we're going to look at that in just a little bit. Let's look at the resume first, and then we'll go on to the, uh, the, the SQL scripts. So right off the bat, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe zoom out a little tiny bit. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Let me go back. Right off the bat, my first impression is this isn't my favorite layout I've ever seen. Is it bad? Um, it's up for interpretation. I, I don't hate it. I don't love it. Um, and maybe that's just as bad as not like not loving it. Like it's just bad. Um, to me, this kind of resume, I don't know. It just feels weird. I, I don't know how to explain it. Just, it I, I, I am a classic, keep it simple for um, those automated processes on like LinkedIn and stuff. Keep it simple to where the machine can read it. That's what I like. Um, I, I, again, personal preference. Uh, but let's start at the very top. First name and last name. He says, aspiring data scientist with BI and inventory background. Um, okay. Uh, I guess that's cool because there's a contact section right here. Let's take a look. The phone number, LinkedIn, Hotmail. Um, okay, real quick. Oh, do I have this pulled up? Give me a second. Because I've been using, this is what I'm using to get on here. Uh, Hotmail. Um, who uses Hotmail? Because I didn't know Hotmail was still in use. I thought they had like discontinued that like 20 years ago. I've, I'm obviously joking, but I mean, come on. Like, just get like a Gmail account. It looks more professional. Hotmail looks makes you look old. I don't know how old you are. I really don't. Let me look. I, I, I'm not trying to be mean. Okay, so you, you graduated, it looks like, with a bachelor's back in 2000. So, you're, so you are a little bit older. Um, with with many years of experience under your belt, I'm sure. It it shows age quickly. I personally recommend trying to stay up to date on uh I don't know. I want I don't want to say current technologies, but Hotmail has been, I mean, I don't know anybody who uses Hotmail anymore. Just something I would take into consideration. It 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 kind of shows a little bit of age on that one. Um, and they also have a GitHub contact section looks good. Um, so lots of good stuff in there. Let's, let's look at the profile An analyst background, uh, oops, an analyst backgrounded in statistics and business operations with a strong passion in identifying patterns with seas of data, helping businesses make better decisions by translating data into meaningful details, interested in opportunities for gaining experiences in the areas of data sciences. Um, Identifying patterns within seas of data. That's some in, that's some imagery right there. I'm not a big fan of poetry and imagery in a profile section. Um, also, I feel like it's super vague. Um, everything in this was vague, especially this part right here. So interested in opportunities for gaining experiences in the area of data sciences. Data science is so broad. Um, I'm a data analyst, so of course... I know more about the analytics space than than this, which looks to be like a data scientist one. I'm just saying that that is super broad. Um, and, and there's a hundred different things that, you know, you could be looking for and we would have no idea. Just the area of data science. My advice is keep it simple. Two sentences, who you are, how many years of experience, the, the skills that you have and what you're looking for. This, what you're looking for is just not beneficial. Uh, I feel like you need to be a little bit more specific. Um, yeah. I, and the seize the data thing, you know, maybe that just really shows your personality. I do not know you personally. And so, you know, maybe that's something that you really like and you want to keep in there. By all means, keep that in there. Um, gosh, I got this nose itch. I apologize. By all means, keep this in there. Uh, but it's just, it, it's it doesn't come off as like, I'm a, I'm a super professional when, you know, you, you aren't being super specific in what you want and you're adding, I don't know, 
And it just doesn't seem, this doesn't read super professional. That's my opinion. So let's move on to the skills. I feel like I've talked about that one enough. We have SQL, Python, SSRS, Microsoft, Excel. So um, you hit a lot of the core stuff. SQL, Python, um, SSRS is for like reporting in SQL Server, and then Microsoft Excel, all good skills. I feel like it's a very small list. Um, let me see. So you're a BI reporting developer. Yeah, and maybe you just don't have any other skills. I would recommend, and this is just me, because this is a very small list of skills after how many years of experience, back to 2011. Going back to 2011, I feel like you should have more than four skills. Um, and, and maybe I'm wrong. I feel like you could pick up some skills on the side. I don't know your personal life. I don't know how much free time you have. But over the course of from 2011, the past 10 years, I think you should have at least more than four skills. Um, try to pick up a cloud platform like AWS or Azure. Uh, maybe try to pick up R or try to pick up I, just there's lots of other skills that you could be picking up. And I feel like only having four skills on a resume is uh, it's just kind of sad to look at. I, again, I am not trying to destroy your resume in any way. I'm just trying to be honest. It makes me just kind of sad that there are more skills on there after 10 years of, of, of employment. Um, you know, being an analyst and being a develop, uh, an inventory analyst and a BI reporting developer, I just, that's what I think. Um, let's go on to the experience really quick. So we have BI reporting developer slash inventory analyst. Uh, has been working there for six years. Um, really quick, just something that's jumping out at me is we have some quantifiable stuff right here. So I want to really look at this just really quickly. Reduced 50% of labor cost and 30% of count time of annual inventory count by developing a Python programmed data capturing application with barcode scanners, which replace the manual paper and pen process. Whoa, that is fantastic. Um, just reading that is like, that's impressive. I mean, I don't know how to do barcode scanning stuff. But if I read that and I was like, whoa, this guy knows how to either he's really creative or he's really inventive or he's a problem solver. That's really cool. Um, that's a really interesting thing to to put on a resume or job, you know, um, like a your job description. Then there's an inventory inventory control coordinator. Um, and this looks like kind of a management position. And then before that, an operations inventory analyst, logistic planner. Um, and so obviously the highlight is on this first one because that definitely has the most relevance. Um, develop and manage over 200 SSRS reports with Microsoft Report Builder and SQL servers. Um, and I'm going to read the middle one because yeah, there's only one left. So I want not read it. Reduce time needed to plan for cycle count schedules. Improvement from an average of three hours of planning to only 30 minutes by using Excel and Python. Periodically analyze sales data and classifying inventory. Oh, this is getting too long. Look, keep it simple. It needs to be like one sentence. It should not take up four rows. Uh, it, it was just a lot to read. Uh, they call it a wall of words. Wow. Because it's just, it was just, it was long. It was too much to read. Um, of course, if I had a ton of time and I was really invested in your resume as a hiring manager or somebody, they might read every single word. But, you know, the, the glance factor on this one is not solid um, just for this section. For, for other sections, it's, it's fine. Um, but overall, good experience. Uh, it looks to have a good, um, some good, really good information. I really like that first one. Although it was a little bit long, it still told a really good, important thing to know. Uh, definitely a problem solver, which is great to great to have. So overall, not bad at all. I would just reduce these in length a little bit, but a pretty good, pretty good job description and good experience. Let's move on to the education. Uh, Simon Fraser University, statistics and mathematics, a bachelor's, and that's awesome. And then British Columbia Institute of Technology, um, business. Diploma Operations Management. So you went first, got the kind of more, I would consider more technical statistics and mathematics background, and then went back for the management. So I think that's how, you know, that coincides with some of his management experience. Uh, really good stuff. I wouldn't change a thing. Education looks totally fine. Um, overall, just the resume part, I personally would change the format of this entire resume 
to make it more easily readable, more clean, similar to the last one that we looked at. I just prefer those formats better because they're just, when you are reading a lot of these and, you know, they come in like this and then, you know, there's different, um, how do I say this? It doesn't look as professional as those the ones that we looked at last one. It doesn't look as professional. It doesn't look as clean. It looks kind of outdated is how I would say it. It looks a little outdated. Um, okay, so let's, and before we before we move on, again, this is anonymous. So I'm, I'm just being completely honest. I'm not trying to hurt whoever's resume this is. I know whose resume it is, but I'm not trying to hurt your, your feelings. I'm trying to be as honest as I possibly can be. So I hope you know that. I care about you. Um, but you know, if something's off, I want to, I want you to know it. I'm trying not to do that in a hurtful way. Let's look at this SQL script because he provided, he or she provided this SQL sample uh, and, and he included some notes in it. Um, but I'm not going to read, that's a lot of notes, but it just says one of the first SQL scripts slash reports that I developed as an inventory analyst. My question is, why would you include one of the first scripts you wrote as an inventory analyst? Why wouldn't you do one of the, you know, last scripts that you wrote that's much more impressive, much more clean, much more, I don't know. And maybe I'm wrong. Let's take a look at it. Uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't show anybody my first scripts. They were terrible. <clears throat> Just absolutely awful. I would show people my really good scripts that I write now. Um, okay. I'm just I'm just skimming it really quick before I kind of start giving feedback. So there's nothing there's nothing really wrong with this, and I don't have a problem with it. Um, it there's not much, and maybe it's up here, and I'm just not reading it. There's not much explanation to what's going on, um, what this data is, what these tables are. Uh, I can, I, it really does look like he knows what he's doing. Um, the format is kind of funky in my, from, from, you know, it's just like, maybe this is how develop, oops, what am I doing? You know, maybe it's just how developers do things where I have like this huge space right here. Uh, I don't work with anybody who writes like that, but um, it's very possible that that's just like a commonplace thing. Overall, he's doing a lot of good stuff using things like get date, case statements, um, joins, trimming, row number, um, window functions, different types of joins, subqueries. I mean, there are lots of good things in here. So overall, I would, I don't, I would include this. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think there's just a lot going on and it's not formatted in like a super easily readable way. That's what I think is bothering me is because the format is just kind of funky and I don't I don't know how to exactly say that. <clears throat> but like when I look at this, this is not how I would write a case statement. It just, it, it's just not how I would write a case statement. So uh, overall though, I like it. I would keep it. I would just maybe even clean it up a little bit, organize it a little bit differently, but you may be writing it exactly how you want it and this is perfect to you. Totally fine. That's just, I have preferences. You have preferences. We all have preferences. Uh, so overall, not a bad resume. I think between these two, I preferred the last resume more. I like that one a little bit more. I think the skill section looked better. It looked cleaner. had more skills. Um, I'm not trying to compare. No, nobody, this, he's, this person isn't worse than the other person. Just the resume, I think, could use a little bit of updating. Um, anyways, I'm not going to harp on that any longer than I have to, uh, get a Gmail. Let's move on to the next one uh, and see what that one looks like. All right, so let's jump into this resume. At the very top, the first thing that I'm noticing is that it is very barren. Um, it has the first name, the last name, and then just one email. Um, I would provide a little bit more information than this. I provide a location because if you are applying to somewhere and they don't know what your location, you could be from across the country for all they know. Um, but if you're a local, they might prioritize you over somebody else. Uh, and so I highly recommend, you don't have to put, you know, one, two, three, here's my address. You can just put uh, Dallas, Texas. Uh, that's what I have on mine. And so I recommend putting some type of identifying location um, on there. 
I also would recommend putting either your LinkedIn or some type of portfolio or website, something that they can go and look up if they choose to. And then of course, um, if you wanna include your phone number, uh, I, I recommend that as well. I just feel like there needs to be more up here. It's super barren right now. Um, there's not much not much on there. I'll give me one second. So, all right, I'm back. <clears throat> so the additional skills. Um, additional skills. Is there another skill section? Uh, so I don't think these are additional skills. I think these are just your skills. Uh, so I'm not sure why they're called additional skills. It also feels... Uh, it just feels weird not having, because every other one had like a, a summary. Yours has no summary. I don't have a problem with that. I, I think the summary section of a resume is kind of normally redundant. You're just repeating things that are in your skills and your experience anyways, or in your education. So I don't have a problem with it not being on there. Um, personally, I've thought about taking mine off because I feel like it makes no difference. But uh, it just feels weird now looking at those past two resumes so let's let's forget about everything that I'm saying. Let's look at the additional skills again. I don't know why it's called additional skills. Uh, those are kind of those are your skills. Those are your main skills. So I just might call it skills section uh, and just get rid of additional. So you have Python and SQL, Excel, SPSS, and Amos. I don't know why Python is is grouped right here with SQL. Um, and I don't know why this is grouped either. Why not put, you know, Python and SQL and Excel on the same line if you're going to do it that way? Um, I feel like there's a lot more that can be said and shown in this skill section rather than just putting Python and SQL. Um, like I said in one of the previous ones, for Python, I don't know what you know in Python. Uh, I, I really just don't. Python is so broad. So if you can specify you're using NumPy, you're using Matplotlib, et cetera, et cetera, I would put that in parentheses and, and specify that because right now I just know that you know what that is. Um, and maybe down here you'll 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 tell me later. Um, but as of right now, I have no idea. And that's your first thing you're telling me. Is, this is my skill section. These are the things I know. Um, you know, uh, that's something I would work on. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's a weird font going on. It's called Georgia, apparently. I... I say keep it simple. This font, this font is like really weird. It's like it it feels completely normal, but compared to the last ones, which were like normals, like Times Times New Roman and and what's the other normal one? This one just feels really weird. Um, you know, in in general, I I just recommend keeping it as standard and as normal as you can. Um, some people like to do go crazy out there and do different fonts and add their picture and do all these things. I don't recommend doing those things. I feel like most people in this profession, unless you're doing maybe like marketing analytics or something where you can showcase your yourself in a different way and be creative with it. Um, but, but I, in at least my line of work or, um, in my domain, that's not really something that people do. So I recommend keeping it super professional, the regular stuff. Um, you guys might find that boring. I just think it's smart. Um, so that's my feedback on the skill section and the font. It's just a weird font to me. Um, here's relevant experience. I'm gonna skim this really quick. Uh, Okay, project leader, project leader, researcher, researcher. Let me go back to the very first job. I'm getting I'm getting kind of confused at what this person does or what this person's like background is. Okay, so there's a Solpine International Restaurant Project. Collaborate with group members to ensure it you. Is this like a school project? Analyze data using linear regression to determine relationship with the data. Launch a new buffet service. Increase social online. So I can't tell, I can't tell if this is a project and it says project on here. I think this might've just been like a school project, project leader. This may have just been like a project that they did in school, but it's really hard to tell. It says relevant experience. And then this one is a researcher and researcher. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just reading some of these things because I'm, I'm genuinely confused at what I'm looking at. 
developed. Uh, so the very first one says consumer research in restaurants during COVID-19 developed an online survey to measure consumers' risk perception, information seeking process based on theoretical models. Um, okay. I, here's my, here's my thoughts on this. I I'm really confused because it says relevant experience. Um, and you're saying project leader. I'm guessing this is a school project. Let me see what, when they were in school. Yeah. So maybe this is like the first year of their undergrad. It's very possible. Um, here's my feedback on it. It, the, the relevant experience, and maybe it's just how I'm reading it, it doesn't seem like, it seems like the way you're, um, I guess, portraying or saying these things is really confusing. I would be breaking this up into two different sections. The first two, which look like actual jobs, which are as a researcher and a researcher, that would be my job experience. Whereas the projects could go in a project section. Because right now, maybe in Everyone watching this may, may think this is completely normal. I, I'm just, I'm confused by the project section. And so, um, <clears throat> so yeah, so that would, that would be my biggest feedback would be separate these and make it more clear on what these are. Um, you have some good stuff. I mean, you're talking about, you know, doing some modeling, um, you know, you're, you're doing some online survey to measure consumerist perception. I mean, these are all good stuff um, in, you know, predictive segmentation, like this stuff sounds really good. It's just hard to really understand the context and how you're, what you're using it for and what you're doing. Um, and I, it's hard to give feedback on it just because it's kind of vague. It, 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 I don't really know. I don't really understand everything that you're doing in your position or what your job entails. I don't know what's, what, what kind of tools you're using or anything. Um, my recommendation would just be more specific. Be more specific in in your job. Um, you, I feel like you're you are saying some good stuff. It's just I, I don't understand how it applies to your position, what impact you had, those types of things. Um, and, and so and there's no and there's no type of um, quantitative information. Like I keep saying that word, but it's it's just numbers. I don't, I'm not saying any numbers to quantify the kind of work that you've done and the impact that you've had in your job. I feel like I said that really fast, but. Um, I'm going to go to the next section because I don't want to keep harping on this. And then there's education, bachelor's of food service management uh, in South Korea. Very cool. Master's in food service management. So you're definitely in the food industry. I can tell you that, um, you know, how you know these things or worked on these things uh, or why you're using these things. Um, I kind of have an idea. It's just hard to tell. It really is hard to tell how you're trying to use your degree with these tools and you don't have any of the tools within your job description. Like how are you using Python? How are you using SQL? How are you using Excel? You can specify that in your job description so I can understand how you're using those things better. Um, because maybe you are using a bunch of Python for, uh, for like this predictive segmentation. Maybe you are doing that. I just don't know. So um, yeah, so big takeaways from this resume for me is um, be much more specific for your skills um, with parentheses and, and adding those sub skills. Be more specific in or separate those out, those two columns or two areas with, with for, for job experience and then projects. And then be more specific in what you're actually doing and the impact that you're having. Uh, that is for this resume, that is my, that would be my biggest feedback. And then the fonts. The fonts as well. I would I would personally just keep it standard and traditional. Uh, in you know, that's just me though. So uh, that is this resume. So that is all the resumes that we're going to be looking at today. I hope that I wasn't too harsh in this one. I feel like in previous videos where I've done uh, reviews on people's resumes, I was actually too, I guess, gentle. I didn't really speak my mind a hundred percent. Whereas. Today, I felt like I spoke, I spoke my mind. I, you know, if I didn't like something, I wanted you to know it and know why. So I tried, maybe I tried a little bit too aggressive. We'll see. We'll see what you guys think. Um, but honestly, I was just trying to be really honest. Um, and these were all anonymous. And so I hope that I didn't hurt anybody's feelings. I was not trying to do that in the slightest. I am just trying to give you guys a glimpse into what I think of and what I'm trying to do. Uh, and, and when I review a resume, what I'm looking for. And so that when there's extra stuff or 
things are said in a certain way or there's certain fonts. I want you to know what I think of them. Take everything that I'm saying with, you know, just a grain of salt. I am just one person. There are many people that may disagree with me or, or see things in a different way. That's totally fine. I just hope that this video benefits you in some way, that you go back to your resume and maybe make some updates or some changes that improves it and gives you a better chance at landing a job. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below, and I will see you in the next video.